nice day out there. Yeah, it's a little rainy right now, but uh, hopefully it's going to clear up. I mean, we've, had a, we've been here since Wednesday, and we've had you know just a gorgeous couple of days. You know, a little bit of rain on Thursday, but uh, you can't ask for much more. In the end of July, the beginning of August, in the I mountains, know. it's not humid. It's uh, well, it's getting <laughs> not a searing heat <laughs> right, at all. Right. It was a little you know, hazy it's, yesterday. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been very pleasant. Very yeah, nice good. mountain air. Good. Yeah, you kind of have the best of both worlds. You get to do the Boston scene and then also come up and yep. have a place up in Madison and uh, enjoy the sort of more natural environment with the kiddos because you have three kids. Three kids. Um, so yeah. they're keeping you busy. We'll talk about them in a minute, but let's get to some Boston sports action sure. because uh, things in the baseball world recently shaken up. Yeah, it was a little crazy on Thursday. Um, I, I took the week off and it probably wasn't the best day to take <laughs> off on Thursday, Where is El which is one of the busiest <laughs> days in Boston sports yeah. um, we've had in some time. Yeah. So it was a little interesting working from up here yeah. on a phone walking through Storyland. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it's uh, it's a little crazy what happened on Thursday. You know, everyone thought the Red Sox would make a few moves moving on because they had Lester uh, going to be a free agent and looking for big money, see so you can get for him. John Lackey's going to make $500,000 next year, which is the league minimum in mm. Major League Baseball because it was written into his contract. If he was injured at any point, that would be the deal. Uh, so that's a very attractive option for another team looking for a guy, an ace at the front of their now, rotation. At cheap tell me money. about him, though, because I don't really know much about baseball. John, what is his? John Lackey is a guy, he, he used to be one of the best pitchers in, in baseball. Mm -hmm. And he came to the Red Sox and was just abhorrent mm -hmm. for the first couple of years of his contract. He, uh, he went under, underwent Tommy John surgery, which is total surgery of the elbow, okay. um, which is over here, not here. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and he's had a, another solid couple of years. He was okay. one of the major reasons they won the World Series last year. Mm. Um, he's making league minimum next year, which is attractive option for a lot of teams out there at the trading deadline, Look, saying, look, we can have this guy for two months, plus we get him next year for nothing. Mm. Uh, the Red Sox knew that and said, you know, let's see what we can get for him. And they got a pretty decent return uh, for from St. Louis with okay. uh, Joe Kelly and, and Alan Craig. So they uh, traded actual bodies. Yes, they traded okay. actual bodies. I mean, Joe Kelly's the number three pitcher, which is, he's decent. He, he pitched in the World Series last year. Alan Craig is a nice right fielder. He'll probably remind a lot of people of a, uh, he's probably on par with Shane Victorino and what he can do out there. So, okay. not a terrible trade, not a great trade. Uh, and then they traded, uh, 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 you know, Miller, wait, uh, Miller in the, in the, uh, the bullpen. They traded uh, Stephen Drew somehow to the Yankees. Uh, I mean, they just unloaded on all the contracts. And they got back some decent returns, but I think more or less, there are two things. One, they knew that Lester was going to be gone next year. You know, don't, don't be surprised if he's pitching in New York mm. uh, because they're the ones that's going to give him the money in the offseason. That just seems, why is that happening so much? Well, I mean, they're going to turn around and give him 155 million bucks mm. when the Red, Red Sox offered him 70 million in the mm. offseason. If you compare that, you know, yeah. you look at it, you, just, you really though. can't refuse it. We have a lot of players that it is tough. have gone to New York. Yes. It seems like. Yes, I mean, we watched Ellsbury last night mm. play in, in Fenway Park. Mm. Uh, probably going to see Lester next year. Um, you know, so, so I mean, one, it was to get a return on some of these guys that they knew weren't going to necessarily be around, mm -hmm. and two was to clear the way for uh, some of these youngsters that they have coming up. You know, Anthony Renato made his first major league start last night for the Red Sox against New York. Uh, he went six innings, a lot of two runs, and that's kind of like a bee in the bonnet for the Red Sox right now, saying, look. This kid just did that. That's probably what John Lester was going to give you against the Yankees. Right. And he's not making 25 million bucks a year. And he's going to have all these years. And he's going to have all these years before he's Hopefully. even close to a free agent. Um, we kind of know what we're doing mm. here. We realize we have a wealth of talent in the pitching department, and it makes sense to try and move some of these guys. I mean, three fifths of their rotation were traded in last year. You know, Jake mm. Peavy, the last week, Jake Peavy, John Lester, John Lackey, all gone. And so the Red Sox have Clay Buckholz as the veteran guy in that rotation. Uh, and then a whole bunch of, of kids, rookies, Ruby right. De La Rosa, Alan Webster, uh, Anthony Renato, um, in a fifth spot, which is, you know, that, that's going to be open. So it's definitely a changing of the guard. And long term, it's going to be interesting to see how this works out. But in the short term is when the Red Sox know they're going to take their lumps and, and understand the fans are angry about uh, what transpired this week. Is it pretty much, a, has there been a loud... I, I think there are a lot of fans that understand what happened, and especially the Lester trade. Mm -hmm. There was an instant... Uh, turnaround because he got uh, Cespedes, who is this power hitter from Oakland, mm. um, 
and it was almost like, well, we got that guy for Lester. Well, that's not bad. Okay. There are a lot of fans that understand what Lester meant and, and what he what he did in the community, uh, you know, particularly from a Dana Farber Cancer Institute mm -hmm. standpoint, where he had lymphoma and was always a, a spokesperson for them and represented, um, you know, the Dana Farber uh, Jimmy Fund so well. Uh, those sort of things they'll miss. Mm. But you, you turn around and you, and you get a, a 28 year old power hitter, uh, which is something they desperately needed. I, I think, in, in a lot of ways, swayed some sort of public right. opinion in that deal. Okay, and can you tell me a little bit more about Ortiz? I mean, I think we're we're going on here, but it's pretty interesting to me. A lot of people are saying he's making so much money now, mm -hmm. and, and he is an older player, correct? He's older. I mean, he's 38. Well, this. His birth certificate says he's 38, no. which who knows, because <laughs> really sometimes from, from the Dominican Republic, those things get a little <laughs> bit muddled. Um, and he's making, you know, decent money, but it's basically he's rolled over every mm -hmm. single year now. So we're not going to have the David Ortiz whining in spring training that we're used to every single season where he wants an extension. Now it just kind of rolls over okay. in perpetuity, right. much like the Tim Wakefield deal did, uh, until you know both parties basically say enough's enough. Okay. Uh, so he's here this year. Obviously, next year he'll be around, and then after that is when they both have to make a decision as to whether or not he can play into his 40s or right. if he's if his if career he's is kind of over. Well, it could I mean he's been a huge hitter for the. He's Boston been huge. Stuff. He's been he's been you know if In the Red Sox didn't have Dave Ortiz and the Red Sox are smart about this. That you know, one, he's a threat in the lineup, mm -hmm. but two, he's an attraction. Right. Um, Absolutely. I mean, for fans that are paying the highest ticket prices in the major leagues, they understand that a lot of those people are there to see a the ballpark and b David Ortiz. So they know if they don't have David Ortiz, they've got to groom someone else mm -hmm. and get that that big guy that can be the um, you know the forefront and the face of the franchise. And they just don't have that besides him yet. Okay. Good. And more information, of course, about the Boston Red Sox at Boston.com. Yes. Um, they can find Fully that covered. anytime. And now let's. Bring it back uh, up here to North Conway. So three small kids. Yes. And uh, the <laughs> running your ragged. They have. But luckily you've brought them to a place that has some of the best attractions and family-friendly stuff going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. You know, in the country. Well, we, we were here in May, and the, the Rorosaurus had just opened at oh Storyland. Oh, my gosh. And you've my, ridden it. Have you ridden oh, it? Oh, we've ridden it, yes. Oh, my we've gosh. We've ridden it plenty. It's frenetic. It it's is. Like, it's pretty crazy. It I is. had no idea. That I just came was... back from Hershey Park earlier in yeah. this, uh, this month, or earlier in July, and that kind of... It, it goes up against some of the wooden coasters they have there, believe it or not. Yeah, because you think Storyland, you think, you know, like the polar coaster is sure. great for the nice kids and, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, and then you get on this thing and you're like, okay, I'm <laughs> screaming. <laughs> okay. Well, my middle child couldn't go last time, yeah. so he was oh. very upset about this. So we told him, eat your vegetables and we're back next time. You may be you're able to go. getting the vegetables in there. And he just made it, so he's oh, very good. excited. Oh, perfect. Yes. Excellent. He, he's convinced that it's because he's four, though, not because he ate the vegetables. We're oh. trying to sway him in the vegetables. Group, but yeah, who knows? yeah. The Roar Source, if you haven't ridden it, is a wooden roller coaster. Storyline has been receiving a lot of press for it, mm -hmm. and it is a lot of fun. Hang on to your hats, and actually, they say to take off your hat. Yeah, they've taken uh, the hat and glasses. Yeah, because probably. you're going to lose it uh, if you don't. It's that fast, yes. and the drops are drops. Um, so it's a lot of fun. So Storyland's definitely on the list. Storyland's on the list. We are, see, we are season pass holders of Storyland. Yeah, of course, Thank you very not? much. Yes. Yeah. Uh, two other. We went to Attach yesterday. That was a lot of fun. Did the uh, the alpine slide, the mountain coaster, which I've never done, uh, been always wanting to do. Yeah, um, I like the mountain coaster because you can really just full throttle it. And I also I like the, the the ride up. It was nice and yeah. just serene and, mm -hmm. and calming, and uh, and then the ride down. My son and I were, were going, and, and he loved it. I yeah. loved it. Um, I liked it a lot better than the alpine slide, which we also did. Um, and then we did. I, I jumped into the big airbag. Oh, did you? We did. That's like a forty foot drop. Is that the one that you just? Yeah, it was. It jump was off the scaffold. Pretty surprising when you're in the air. You don't realize how. <laughs> you're up there. You're kind of there for well, a second. Well, I've seen like, pictures. Ah. I'm like, uh-uh. I mean, it's just, it's like one of the things. So I'm like, I, I would a, totally. I did get a lecture after I finished because I didn't kick my legs out enough. So oh. next time I go, I'm going to have to, you know, swing my legs up a little bit more. Oh, geez. Did you just pile drive it? I guess so. I don't know. I was in the air. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and then we did the water slides there, too. So we had okay. a pretty full day. It and they have Buddy Bear's play pool for the little, little ones. Yes. And then they had, like, the traditional uh, yep. water slides. Yeah, and then we had the water the slides. My, my kids have never done water slides, so it was nice to actually get them uh, on something that's not, you know, way too crazy, right. or like in a big tube that's going to shoot right. them down, or anything yeah. like that. These are just nice water slides that they can you know, get on a tube or a mat and just kind of 
And Anatash has been doing own. that for a very long time. I yes. remember coming up as a kid and doing the alpine slide with my cousins and I, stuff. So much fun. When I was a child doing the alpine slide and the cannonball, which I think, you know. Was that the enclosed tube? That was the enclosed yeah, tube where I they remember. would shoot you out and you'd almost uh, go all, so far you'd go to the cement. So I think, <laughs> I think they maybe corrected that, right? they <laughs> probably got rid of that for, yeah, for I'm guessing some yes. reasons. <laughs> okay, give me one more uh, popular attraction for you and the family here in the valley. Well, Cranmore, the, the family mountain center, we haven't done that yet. Oh, uh, looking fun. forward to yeah. that. Um, and I'm going to go boot shopping right now over the tent sales. So you're going to do sure. the tax-free shopping? Yes, of course. Excellent. Absolutely. All right. So you have a full day ahead of you. Going to go get a coffee, too. You know, coffee, Frontside Grind yes. is my favorite place. I am and, aware. Yeah. And it's the, funny because I like the Frontside Grind. My dad likes the Met. Oh, so yeah. we kind of have to yeah, go, go Well, ways. luckily, they're right across the yes. street. But I just I like the ambiance in Frontside Grind. And I the owners are just really they're a great couple. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of places to find coffee here in the Valley as sure well. Thing. So, Eric, thank you so much. Do we get everything that you wanted to talk about? Absolutely. OK. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for updating me on the Red Sox as well. I'm Anytime. a little bit out of the loop Anytime. there. So every time you come on, I'm like, give me the information. <laughs> but I appreciate it. The next time we hear all the Bruins will be in, in style. So yes. I'll probably hopefully be a little bit more informed about them. <laughs> all right. Thanks again. Thank you. All right, folks. We have a little bit more to go before we wrap the show. We're going to try to fit another watch and win and another look at the weather forecast.